Wow, Mount Everest. You know, I actually successfully made this trek back when I was in my younger years. Wow, really, Joe? Yep, it all became easy once my friend Leaking Larry and I invented our very own neat little trick. You had a friend named Leaking Larry? Yep, he leaked a lot. Wow, I never would have guessed. And what was that trick exactly? Well, Donnie, back in the 30s, Larry and I used to slick our entire bodies in Aunt Jemima's syrup so that it acted as a coating of insulation. Of course, not only would this protect you from frostbite, but it would also function to ward off the necromancers at the top of the summit who would regularly sacrifice unsuspecting hikers in order to summon the Dark Lord Vargoth into being. Well, anyways, getting things back on track. Kim, it's literally below freezing. You need to wear some additional layers before we head out. As if this climb wasn't dangerous enough already, what if we encounter a storm while we're out there? Yeah, the last thing we need is you not being able to keep up with us because you catch frostbite. Even with our combined strength, I don't think the four of us have the capability to haul your ass back here, Kim. Ah, apologies, Donald. Sometimes I forget that not everyone is 280 pounds of pure muscle with 4% body fat like I am. No wonder you wouldn't be able to haul me back. Yeah, that's totally what I was getting at. It's not the storm you should be wary of, Mr. President. It's the monsters that bring the storm. Holy shit, is that John Schnatter? Kim, how do you know who that is? Are you kidding me, Barack? In North Korea, Papa John's is a huge hit. All of my top generals love Papa's garlic sauce. Can we not call him that? It is quite amazing, isn't it? Let's also not forget that he's the former CEO of that pizza chain. Essentially being forced to step down amidst some controversy that he himself brewed. It was a fucking conspiracy, I tell you. They were out to get me and not even the Papa was able to fend all of them off. I felt like the last of the English colonists, heroically striving for peace, while those Native American savages unjustly took my land and slaughtered my brethren without any provocation on our part. I'm not sure that's how that went down. They stole my throne from me. I was a god. They all saw me as one. Just like how Pocahontas saw John Smith as her white god. And who are they exactly? Who do you think? Same people that went after Kennedy. The Illuminati. Either that or aliens. All right, I really think we should get out of here before this guy decides to tag along. I always thought you had the best pizza around the block, Jonathan. Damn it, someone stop Joe before he gets us involved with this guy. I told you we should have gotten one of those child leashes just so Joe doesn't wander off. You watch what you say, Barack. He is a national hero in my country. He is practically like the father to all North Koreans. You know, I never minded the controversy surrounding you, Jonathan. Joe, he said an actual slur during one of his interviews. If he said that in an official setting, who knows what this guy said behind the scenes in the kitchen. Well, maybe that's what made the pizza so tasty. I was goaded into that insidious snare, damn you. I never meant to say it. Green Goblin was right. The only thing that people loved more than a hero was to see them fall and fail. They robbed me from my throne with an orchestrated coup. It was like being chased by Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Gang, except instead of catching a monster, they caught old John Schnatter, CEO of Papa John's and Miracle Worker. Who the hell calls you a miracle worker? I do, Donald. Papa, would you mind signing my robe when you get the chance? Just let me wipe my greasy fingers down first. I've been sampling some of my former company's pizzas for the past few years. It's been a hobby of mine ever since I left. I assure you the quality has gone down since I was unjustly expunged. This is my 500th pie this month. Holy shit, this guy's a nutcase. Okay, well, as enjoyable as this was, we really have to get going before it's too late. Didn't you hear what I said earlier? You're not safe out there. Don't worry about us, Papa. We planned for this trip ahead of time. And with most of us being in relatively healthy shape, except for Donald, of course, I'd say we've taken the proper precautions. I didn't mean the dangers about climbing Everest. I'm talking about the monsters lurking around it. Oh God, the necromancers are still here? What do you mean by monsters? There have been sightings of yetis here recently. There are Indians here? Jesus, Joe. Come on, suit up, Mr. President. You won't make it without a guide out there. I'm tagging along with you. Oh uh, yeah, thank you for the offer, but we actually planned on this trip being just the five of us. Welcome to our party, Jonathan. Joe, for fuck's sakes. Listen, Barack, I have chest day on Monday which means I'm not trying to die here tonight. If bringing Papa along boosts our survival rates and helps us avoid those yetis, then that's what we're gonna do. There are no damned yetis. Let's get a move on, Mr. President. I'll explain everything as we make our way to the summit. Stay close, Mr. President, and keep pace. If you lag behind, then you're most likely as good as dead. Letting Kim and Joe make the shot calls, God, this is a recipe for disaster. What do you two think? Well, despite the fact that he consumes 500 pizzas a month, I don't really have too much of an issue with it. I mean, after we saw that skinwalker and the giant kraken, anything is possible, really. We might actually need him to evade those yetis. Seriously, George? 
Come on, Donald, back me up on this. Hey, John, what do you got in your bag? What do you think? Pizza, of course. Six pies, to be exact. Never know when you might need them. Well, he's good in my book. Seriously, Donald? All it takes is pizza to win you over? Oh, shit, you're right, Barack. Finally, some common sense. Hey, John, are any of them veggie pizzas? Hell fucking no. Pepperoni and sausage only. Oh, yeah, he's definitely good in my book now. I need to stop hanging out with you guys. Man, those guys are kind of slow hikers, aren't they? Well, you just mentioned pizza, so Donald is bound to catch up with us in no time. Yeah, 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 we're here now, so you can quit your whining, Kim. Now that we're all here, how about you clue us in on what all this talk about the Yetis is about, Jonathan? So there's basically over a dozen routes to reach Everest Summit. But people usually only follow one of two routes, the North Ridge and the Southeast Ridge. People who traverse either of those paths end up missing. Hmm. A quick Google search confirms it. Tourist activity surrounding Everest plummets to an all-time low amidst concerns of vanishing hikers. And we're only now just hearing about this? Was it MSNBC? If so, then it's fake news. You'll find more accurate information on the Sci-Fi Channel. Well, I guess that explains why our reservations at the lodge were so cheap. How cheap exactly were they, Joe? $22 for a weekend stay. Holy fuck! And you didn't think to look into why prices were so low. There could have been a serial killer on the loose, or even worse, a furry convention. Donald, I don't think there would be a furry convention all the way here at Mount Everest. Listen, Donnie, all of the expenses from this trip are covered by funds from the federal budget. The less expensive things are, the less Kamala gets mad at me. Why would Kamala get mad at you? Oh, because I spend most of my days recording gaming videos. She's the one that proposed the president's budget for this fiscal year. She even forged my signature because I was in the middle of a Heroes of the Storm match with Donald. Was it the time we were playing Chogall? Yep. That was a good-ass game. Can't say I blame you. You're telling me I'm going to die on this godforsaken mountain because you gringos were playing a Heroes of the Storm match. Relax, gentlemen. This is why I'm here. I know of a safe way for us to reach the summit. Wherever you lead, I will follow, Papa. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad those pizzas are here. Say, how about we open one up? I'm starving. Donald, you had a 16-ounce prime rib with mashed potatoes and a large Coke back at the lodge. Yeah, that was a whole 30 minutes ago, Barack. I'm hungry again. Sorry, I have a fast metabolism. Regardless, I don't think it's a good time to stop moving. Looks like a blizzard is about to hit us. Oh my goodness. How magical. Joe, you crystallized fossil. Just because you're about to keel over any second now doesn't mean that the rest of us want to go out alongside with you just yet. This way, Mr. President. There's a trail up here which will lead us to a glacial cavern. We can weather out the storm in there. Uh, guys, did anyone else hear that? Hear what? I don't know. It sounded like a loud roar. I heard it too, Joey. It must have been Donald's stomach. Quiet, Kim. Holy fuck. It's the Indian. Uh, I mean, Yeti. We're all gonna die. Joe, are you being serious right now? What are you talking about? That is a snowman, Joseph. What? No, it can't be. I saw it. I know I did. Jesus, my heart. Joseph, you try to prank me like that again, and I swear I'll strangle you. More like sit on you. You dare possess the audacity to insult my aesthetic physique and washboard abs, Donald? Guys, you both look like sumo wrestlers, all right? So with that having said, let's get moving before we turn into snowmen ourselves. In this storm... I'm starting to like this guy. Ha, huh, he called you a sumo wrestler, Donald. And I call you a war criminal, George. I know what I saw. I know it. Start moving, Joe. Don't get left behind. John, how did you come to know of this route? I discovered it myself. In my years since I stepped down, I've been frequenting Everest quite often. It's a place of serenity and seclusion to me. It's my zen, if you will, like a donut shop for cops or a happy ending parlor for League of Legend players. This place helps me gather my thoughts and focus on how I can reclaim my lost empire. From the ashes of my company's plummeting stocks, I will emerge like a messiah, either that or a phoenix, whichever is more badass. Fascinating that you discovered this. This is great. I feel like I am Lord Vader on Hoth, traversing the ice tunnels to smite down those thankless, unruly rebel cocksuckers. About the missing hikers. Isn't it possible they just got caught out in the storm like we almost did? I mean, without John here, we probably would have frozen out there. Well, the problem is it's not only just the hikers that are disappearing. The corpses that surround Everest have also mysteriously vanished. Some say there are signs of a beast roaming around where the bodies used to be. Others claim that something out there is eating them. Seriously, Donald? Shut the hell up, Kim. Well, what do you think happened to the bodies, John? Leprechauns. Okay. Jewish leprechauns, to be exact. All right, then. Exactly how long can one of these blizzards last? You're not going to like the answer, Mr. President. How long? Well, how many toes do you have on one foot? Three. 
It was a genetic defect. Back in my high school years, I even got nicknamed Toad for that. Well, the answer was supposed to be five. Damn, I was close. Hours? Days. Holy shit, we're gonna die. Quiet, Joe. Thankfully, we have John here with his six pies. That should be more than enough to get us through this catastrophe ushered in by Mother Nature. Here, I'll take these five and you guys can have the other one. Think there's pineapple on it. Donald, you must be high if you think Colossal Kim is settling for just one pizza. I am not going into chest day on a caloric deficit. Well, best get comfortable, Mr. President. We're going to be here for a while. I can't believe Donald actually took five out of the six pizzas for himself. This might actually turn into our favor, Barack. How so exactly? Well, think of it more as a redistribution of nutrients. The fatter Donald is, the longer he will sustain the five of us. Are you talking about eating, Donald? Jesus, Kim. We've been in this cave for four hours and you're already thinking about cannibalizing? Do you know how insane you sound? Listen to me. All we have to do is Operation Valkyrie this motherfucker and we all can survive this series of unfortunate events. Think of it, Barack. You and I working together. Not only would it guarantee our survival, but it will also serve to solidify the diplomatic ties between North Korea and Wakanda. Kim, are you saying Barack is from Wakanda? Never mind that. Kim, you do know that Operation Valkyrie also failed, right? Wait, seriously? Yes. Also, Donald is one of our best friends. Just imagine if the others heard your ludicrous plans. No doubt they'd be deeply unsettled and disturbed. So you're saying I throw snow in his eyes, then Joe goes for the takedown? Kim's weak points are his knees and ankles. Get him on the ground and he'll be like a turtle unable to upright himself, then we won't have to worry about food problems anymore. He could last us a month. What about George and Barack? You think they'll try to stop us? George literally invaded foreign soil just for some oil. And have you seen Kim's forehead? Lots of grease up there. If anything, he'll probably help us by holding back Barack. Well, I'm ready when you two are. You with me, Josephine? Always, Donald. Hey, Donald, you guys sound a bit excited over there. What are you guys talking about? Uh, nothing. Just talking about our Minecraft server. Amazing. Even in a distressing time like this, they still manage to maintain their composure and just think about the little things. Truly, I was in the wrong for even considering such a heinous act. Donald and Joe are definitely better men than I will ever be. What the hell was that? I knew it. You guys didn't believe me, but I knew I saw it. It's an Indian. Fuck, the one time I didn't bring my rifle. Stay behind me. If that pencil pusher Luke Skywalker was able to chop off a wampa's arm, then surely an alpha like me can do the same. No, wait, hold on. Maybe all she wants is food. Maybe I can give her one of my pizzas and she'll let us go. How the hell can you tell that thing is female? Hey there, beautiful. My name's John. There's no reason to maul me. I'm just here to offer you one of my signature pies. Well, it definitely seems a bit calmer. John, you had an extra pizza and you didn't tell me? Of course. I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't have a spare pizza in the hidden compartment of my pack. I was just saving this one for a special occasion. What makes it so special? It's got shrooms baked into it. Look, all signs of aggression are gone now. Goodness, what a gentle giant. Joe, that thing just tried to kill us a minute ago. <laughs> Guys, she's whispering to me. She just told me her name is Miranda. Is this guy fucking serious? <laughs> Guys, she wants me to stay with her. No way we're leaving you, Jonathan. Now let's get out of here while that bitch is still tripping. The hell, Joe? She's saying she wants to make Yeti babies with me. Can I watch? What the fuck is happening? Look, even if I did want to leave, Miranda would just go out and eat other hikers the moment she finishes this pizza or the second I left. I know what I must do. Go! I'll collapse the entrance to this cavern behind us. That way no hiker will ever be put at risk again. I see now that this was all fated to happen. Stepping down from Papa John's, then meeting all of you. It was a higher power meticulously shepherding me to this point, to meeting Maya. Thought you said her name was Miranda. Who the fuck cares what her name is? She's smoking hot. Go now, Mr. Presidents. Live your lives to the fullest. Look at this act not as a sacrifice, but as a man finally righting his wrongs. Remember me not for the mistakes I made in the past, but for the positivity I will usher into the future. Farewell. Well, that was a fucking adventure. I really did want to try some of that shroom pizza, though. As sad as it was to leave John up there, in the end it was what he wanted. A bittersweet conclusion to our journey. I'm just glad we didn't have to jump Kim after all. Wait, what? Joe, you idiot! You were gonna jump me back in that cave, Donald. How insidious. I would never harbor such an ill intent towards you. Now that was a solid-ass workout, Arnie. My chest is sore already. Donald, 
All you did was eat six protein cookies while the rest of us were lifting. Well, I didn't say it was sore from working out. I have acid reflux. Jesus, I feel so swole. I can feel my body shredding beautifully like a Greek sculpture. We gotta do this more often. Kim, you did one jumping jack, then took a 30-minute break only to walk on the treadmill at two miles per hour. Yeah, it was great. I think I beat my personal record today. I guess it's true that working out with friends does motivate you to surpass your limits. I feel like Vegeta, emerging from the hyperbolic time chamber, ready to kick Perfect Cell's ass. More like Fat Boo. Kim, Vegeta never kicked Perfect Cell's ass one-on-one. -on -one. Wait, seriously? Working out definitely made me feel like I was in my 20s again. I feel like I can take on the whole city nightlife. Plus, it's still early, so what should we do now? Oh, I know. What about a post-workout meal? Donald, you did not even lift. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm not hungry. Well, that was something. I can't believe that Chinese Buffet instantly flipped their open sign to closed once they saw Kim and Donald get out of the car. I don't think I've ever had that happen in my life, and I have been around some insanely large bodybuilders. This is outrageous. I understand if they were intimidated when they saw Donald approaching. He is practically like the blob from the X-Men. But why me? I'm probably like the leanest one here. This is a lawsuit waiting to happen. You cannot deny a paying patron entry from your establishment during working hours solely based on their looks or how much you anticipate they may eat. That's literally the risk of being a big eater restaurant. This is discrimination at its finest. I may have an idea on how to get you guys in. Uh, however, it does involve some duct tape, a handlebar mustache, a fedora, sunglasses, and a very large trench coat that you can both fit in. Back in my early years, this was how my friends Hula Hoop Holly and Cinnamon Crusted Chris were able to trick the cashiers working at the box office into allowing us to buy tickets for a rated R movie. Oh, of course, back then, cinematography wasn't as refined as it is nowadays and usually involved still pictures of crayon drawings on a napkin, which were then projected onto a screen using an Indonesian shaman's innate telepathic abilities. What the hell is he saying? Joe, are you suggesting that either Kim or Donald climb onto the other's shoulder to grant the illusion that they're an adult? Joe, they can't get into the buffet because they're too overweight. Not because they need to look like an adult. Oh, fiddlesticks. I thought I was onto something. Well, what the hell are we gonna do now? I may have an idea. Look at this, Mr. Presidents. Oh golly, a Game Boy. Arnie, I enjoy your innovative mind, but we cannot eat electronic devices, you silly goose. Joseph, this is not a Game Boy. This is a spirit box. It allows you to detect abnormal radio frequencies, allowing you to communicate with ghosts. Also, I know that you cannot eat it. I've tried in the past. You tried to eat that? Oh, fascinating. Ever since our encounter with the Skinwalker, I've been looking into ghost hunting equipment myself. You ran into a Skinwalker? Yeah, about a month ago, Arnie. You know, the best way to rid one of those entities from the premises is to slick oneself in oil and- And masturbate furiously, right? See, I told you, Donald. I'm still mentally scarred to this day. Uh, no. I was going to say, oil oneself, then strike a front double bicep pose. Usually the spirits are then too shy to be in the presence of your intimidating physique, and will thus begin haunting gyms as they attempt to amass gains. Uh, is this actually true? The most active entities go to Metroflex or Gold's Gym, while the Fata spirits tend to haunt Planet Fitness, either that or KFC. The prime signal that a gym is being haunted by a fat ghost is if the ghost is bicep curling in the squat rack. Fascinating. This cannot be serious, right? Wait, I do that. There is a house not too far from here called The Crying Alley. Oh, I see it on Google. The house has amassed many reports of immense paranormal phenomena. Yes, including wails and crying so loud that even the houses next to it and the people on the streets across from it can hear. Well, maybe the crying was just due to a failing marriage. You would know all about that, wouldn't you, Donald? Low blow, Barack. And on a night where I'm starving as well, talk about kicking a man while he's down. Yes, Donald, I would say that would be a reasonable assessment. Only problem is the house is vacant. No one currently lives in it. It could be some sort of hobo sex ritual. Those are quite common in abandoned houses in North Korea. No. Like I said, it is vacant. No one lives in the house and no homeless people currently occupy it. What if the sound was due to a mage, ironclad in his enchanted ceremonial garments, summoning an ancient celestial being into... So you five have run into a skinwalker, but think that the more logical conclusion for these strange accounts is a failing marriage? A mage summoning a celestial entity and a hobo sex cult? I never said it was a cult, merely a ritual. There's a big difference. This is what I have to put up with every day, Arnie. Anyways, the places of highest activity is the basement, the child's bedroom, and last but not least, the kitchen. My God, it must be a descendant of Donald's. Why the hell do we keep allowing this guy to tag along with us? Come, Mr. President, I shall drive. Oh, hell yeah, more spooky adventures. Guys, we cannot seriously be thinking of doing this again. It's all right, Joey. 
This time we have both me and Arnold here. Twice the slicked up bodies means twice the chance that we'll be safe. Fuck, oh fuck. I really shouldn't be tagging along to these adventures. It isn't good for my heart. Neither is it good for Donald's, but you don't see him complaining. That's because I'm in the process of meticulously brainstorming ways on how I can kill you, Kim. Tonight, in this very house, I'm gonna do it. And I'll frame it on the ghost. Good one, Donald. Wasn't joking. I've had it with your jokes and I'm seriously going to murder you tonight. Uh, are you actually serious? Holy fuck! Did anyone else hear that? Please tell me I wasn't the only one to have registered that. We have a Jeffrey Dahmer among us. So pardon me for asking, Arnie, but what exactly prompted you into ghost hunting? Well, as you know, my aspirations were initially to come to America and become a bodybuilder and actor. After being in the movie scene for a while, it got a little stale, so I decided to find new hobbies. Then when I saw how dead the audience turnout was for Terminator Dark Fate, I decided that was the last straw. So I decided to take a break from the movie scene and explore the Dark Fate after death, which, as you know, George, is ghost hunting. Fascinating. Also, I liked what you did with the whole Dark Fate bit. That truly is a heartwarming story, but can someone please tell me that they heard what Donald said? I need someone watching my back in here, if he seriously wasn't joking. Oh, hush, Kim. Donald wouldn't hurt a fly. I'm sure he was just horsing around. He was gonna kill and eat me last week when we got stranded atop Everest. Don't be so dramatic, Kim. Come, Mr. President, let's head inside. I have all the equipment we'll need for this investigation. Wow, this house looked just like Nana's old place. Joe, did your Nana live in a crack house? Of course not, Donnie. Uh, however, she did smoke crack on occasion. She also had the same clown doll as that one in the corner there. Whoa. Well, that's not creepy at all. That's not the only thing. George, take a look around us. Notice anything strange? Oh, I see. The orbs, right? Correct. The ghost in this house must be a strong one if we can see orbs already. Oh, shit. Damn it, guys. Why the fuck can't we ever go anywhere nice? Like a femboy Hooters or something? I, is there something you're trying to tell us, Joe? Mr. President, look, the EMF reader is detecting signs of activity. How does that do hickey work anyhow? Well, if my understanding is correct, it reads electromagnetic frequencies and detects any abnormalities left behind by paranormal activity. Precisely, George. Good job. I'm impressed. What a teacher's pet. Do I get a gold star, Arnie? You can get one peck flex. Did you guys see it? Uh, no. Well, hopefully the ghost saw it and got intimidated. By the looks of the EMF reader, it looks like it did. It's gone quiet. Where exactly was the source of the electromagnetic abnormalities? It was right in front of us, where the doll was sitting. Oh, fuck. What the hell? Where in the camel fuck did Nana's doll go? Oh, shit, what the hell was that? Quickly, Mr. President, it came from the kitchen. Don't run too fast, Kim. Otherwise, you might trip and fall, and who knows? Some falls may prove to be fatal. What the hell? Did anyone else just hear Donald? Guys? Please, someone tell me my eyes are playing tricks on me. Because I think I see Nana's doll. Whoa, that's spooky. Spooky, George? It should be impossible. Calm down, Joe. I'm sure there's got to be some sort of explanation for this. Donald, how the hell are you so calm after seeing a doll move by itself from one room to the next? Honest answer, Joe. After being at so many WrestleManias, I've seen stunts done that defy physics and should be virtually impossible. Compared to that, this isn't all too impressive. If you really want to impress me, clown, then do a backflip. Either that or smoke crack like Joe's Nana. May her soul rest in peace. Well, no wonder people heard crying from the kitchen. There's nothing in this pantry but fiber bars and whole grain snacks. Oh, wait, here we go. Finally, something good. A cookie jar. Don't mind if I do. Whoa, holy shit! Damn! Holy chocolate fuck! Well, Donald, did that meet your expectations? What? Oh, you mean the gust of wind that just blew it across the room? Donald, how the hell can you be so skeptical even after our previous adventure to the Johnson Mansion? It's called being pragmatic, Barack. Always fact check what you see in here, and you'll never fall prey to the deceptive web of lies that the mainstream media spins. Mr. President's look. Oh man, that doll is gone again. And I think I know where it went. Looks like it wants us to go to the bedroom. Man, that is one freaky doll. Donald, get your mind out of the gutter. Especially with Arnold here, spearheading the investigation. The least you can do is treat this seriously and be respectful towards him. Kim, get the oil ready, and let's slick our bodies up. Already on it, Arnold. Say, do you mind lathering my back? Because of my insanely large biceps, it's hard to reach back there. Yes, I am working on it. So this is the plan, Mr. Presidents. Although you may not like it, I need someone to volunteer. Don't worry, I'll take one for the team. I even came with protection. What the- what the hell do you plan on doing in there? Wait, what? Isn't that what you were insinuating? I mean, the ghost was leading us to the bedroom and we were oiling each other up. I thought that was the game plan. 
Although that would surely scare the ghost into vacating the premises, Kim, I think Arnold's plan has a bit more sophistication and depth to it. Thank you, Mr. President. What I was going to say was that I need a volunteer or two to go in the room with the spirit box. Use it to try to communicate with the ghost and make it active. Once it makes its presence known, I'll leap into the room and jump scare it with a vacuum pose. That should send it back to KFC. So who's going to go in? Fuck it, I'll go. And Joe's coming with me. Come on, Joe. Oh, fuck, why do I have to go? It's actually a good idea. An excellent way to bait out a spirit is to have one individual who does not believe in them and one that is deathly afraid of them. Well, hold on, Donald. I know you're currently mad at me and had enough of my jokes, but I just want you to know that I still care about you and your safety. Goodness, how wholesome. So with that having said, take off your suit and let old happy ending parlor Kim rub some oil into your inner thighs to protect you against whatever entity lurks within that bedroom. What the fuck? Donald, this is actually a good idea, and Kim, you should go with them. If you run into trouble, at least Kim's oiled body will be in the room to protect you from any spectral assault. We all must make sacrifices for the greater good, Donald. Have fun in there. Hey, stop shoving me. I will continue oiling as we enter the room. Well, what do we ask it? Hello, is anyone here? Well, that's all I got. Jesus, that's all you guys can come up with? Come on, I'm the skeptic, and even I can think of some better ghost icebreakers than that. Well, go for it then, Donald, since you seem to be the ghost whisperer. Hello, can whatever is in this room speak through this device and tell me its name? I'm quite a famous person, you know. Billionaire, playboy, 45th president. I even showed up on WrestleMania several times. It's the only time you'll ever get to speak with a super celebrity such as myself. If you're angry at me for trying to eat your cookies earlier, I apologize. I also give Donald the silent treatment whenever he goes through my pantry and eats my snacks. Look, I wasn't really a believer before, but recently we ran into a skinwalker. Perhaps you're related. Now, Donald, that seems insensitive to assume. Are you saying all spirits look alike, Donald? That's racist. Give me a break. You cannot be racist against a spirit. We don't even know where this thing came from. Not from here. Fuck! Oh, holy fuck! Well, I'll be damned. Quickly, ask it for its ASL. Kim, are you trying to hook up with a ghost? Well, I mean, I'm already oiled up, so why the hell not? Not ghost. Imprisoned. Suffering. Shit! Oh, fuck! Please, someone get me out of here! What the hell? If it's not a ghost, then what the hell is it? Threatened with imprisonment and it likes crack? It's probably Hunter Biden. What do you guys think Donald's talking about in there? Probably how he thinks Wendy's is superior to Burger King. Either that or he's threatening to deport the ghost if it doesn't show him its green card. Well, either way, I'm sure they'll figure it out. We have two presidents and one supreme leader in the room. Surely they have overcome more difficult obstacles than this. Nice job chasing off the spirit, Kim. Now it won't respond anymore. All that I proposed is that we play Naked Twister. What? It's a good bonding activity. Bless your soul, Kim. Maybe now my heart won't implode in my chest. Well, any more bright suggestions, Kim? Maybe we should ask Barack to come in here and do a rain dance. Perhaps that will spur the spirit back into action. Weren't you just reprimanding me for saying something racist? How is that racist? Don't all Wakandans know how to rain dance? Holy shit, guys, look. The ghost is writing in your journal, Arnie. How incredible. Ghost hunting is as exciting as building a pump in one's bicep at the gym. Except in these cases, I build a pump in other places in my body. You know what I mean, Barack? Uh, n no, can't say that I do. It's saying it's not from this world. The wails and cries emanating from the house is the spirit slowly melding from its dimension into ours. It doesn't belong here. Tell it we know that. And we will try to get it back to Planet Fitness as soon as possible. No, it's saying it doesn't belong from this world at all. It's not even a ghost. Then what the hell is it? Can you please let us know what you are or where you are from? It says, from my dimension, light is to you what darkness is to me. A shroud so suffocating and overwhelming that it brings about eternal bliss. Both to those who welcome it and to those who do not. We are the reliquary of the damned, the being with a thousand faces. What in the world does that mean? I think that's a line from Green Eggs and Ham. Look, it's still writing. In darkest night, even light may die. We watch from the dead trees, we watch from the weeping stars. But the time is near and our arrival cometh. So prepare little lambs for the gift of death we come with. Mr. President, I have been on my fair share of ghost hunts, and I can say I do not like the sound of this. I suggest we leave. Oh, shit. I think it's getting angry that we're leaving. Ah! What the? My chest. Fuck! Donnie's getting possessed. Stand back, Joey. The power of Christ compels you, spirit. Stop that, Kim. Keep it up, Kim. It's weakening it. Give me back, my friend, Hunter. You crack fiend! By Allah's wrath, be gone, ghost. Ouch! Did that work? Donald, my obese friend, are you back with us? I was never gone, you idiots. 
I was just having acid reflux again from the protein cookies. Oh. It's getting too dangerous. Donnie, get out here. We gotta go. Holy smokes! What's going on out here? The spirit is trashing the whole building. Guys, I think I figured it out. I know what the spirit is. What is it? Isn't it obvious? It's a Democrat. Peacefully protesting in death as it did in life. Look, it's even breaking the windows and everything, too. Guys, we have to get the hell out of here. Mr. President, I advise caution. Sometimes these spirits may follow the last person it interacts with. Well, where the fuck do we go? I'm not taking this thing back to North Korea. I think I may have a place in mind. Wow, did you guys see the manager's reaction when the chow mein started floating around by itself? Can't say I blame him for pissing himself. Certainly that was a once-in-a-lifetime experience, Mr. President. I just wish we could have figured out who or what that thing was. I'm more shocked that Joe's plan with the trench coat worked and we were able to get into the buffet. Sometimes all you need is a little faith, Barry. Those fuckers had it coming. They'll learn to rue the day they deny Daddy Donnie entry to an all-you-can-eat buffet. Someone please help me. I feel like I herniated three of my discs. Light is to you what darkness is to me. The being with a thousand faces. What does it all mean? Fuck, I can't focus this late. It's four in the morning. I'll have to try my hand at this another night. Maybe Elon will know. Haven't heard from him in a few weeks, though. Hope he's all right. Donald, you really pulled through for me here. When I invited you to star on Family Feud, I didn't expect you to bring the rest of your gang and even Drake along, too. You got it, Steve. Also, we come as a package deal. Wherever I go, they usually tail me around like my own personal sidekicks. Excuse me, your sidekicks? Whenever Daddy Donnie rings, you know Drizzy will always be there to answer the call. No matter how late in the night or how rainy the weather, I'll always be a shoulder you can lean on. Drake, we talked about this shit. I'd bring you along so long as you promise not to be all weird and zesty. I'm sorry, Donnie. I'll be good now. I don't want to rain on your parade or Steve's. Last thing I'd want is to turn that beautiful smile upside down. He, he's not going to be like that when we start filming, right? Don't worry, Steve. I notified them of the guidelines beforehand, so we know the code of conduct. That's good to hear. Don't think I've ever done an episode on this grand of a scale before. Although you all may not be related by blood, I think we can tweak the rules a little bit just this one time, considering the viewership you all will bring. Pleasure to meet you, Howie. Listen, I'll tell you, I'm ready to see all those sexy broads carrying their briefcases. Also, you can bet your bottom that I'm going to show that banker who's boss. The banker? Mr. President, this is not deal or no deal. Joey, you better take your damn prescriptions. You're not gonna go out there lollygagging and disgrace me in front of my nation. All of North Korea will be watching this. Steve, with us here, we'll drive your ratings through the roof. Might even surpass the Super Bowls. Yeah, I don't know about that one, Donald. The Super Bowl generated over 113 million viewers. Never say never, King. If all we had was doubt in our hearts, then no one would ever spread their wings and leave their nest. The fuck does that even mean? Listen here, Donald. I got an executive producer I answer to. You sure he's not going to say this weird type of stuff when we're out there? Listen, Steve, I know showbiz. I wouldn't bring him on if I thought he'd be a liability on your show. You got nothing to worry about. Steve, I can order my generals to bot viewers to boost your ratings if you want. Oh, hell nah. Definitely don't do that. We do things clean here, Kim. Steve, baby, I'm Donald freaking Trump. We don't need any bots. Any show I'm in makes prime time. We're gonna go 300 million views easy. Steve, I've been meaning to ask. If I slip you a 20, you think you can give Champagne Poppy a cheat sheet on some of the answers? I don't do too well under pressure and could use a helping hand. Donald, I simply do not like this clown. I don't feel comfortable bringing him onto the show. Drake does bring up a good point. They definitely do that for the kids on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? No 10-year-old is that fucking smart. If I do that, my ass will get fired. I didn't work my way up here just for y'all to tear me down. Look, no one's gonna cheat, and no one's certainly gonna bribe Steve. We're gonna play things by the book here. This is your show, and we'll respect that. Good. Now get your acts in order, gentlemen. This is a family-friendly show. Occasional curse words are okay, just make sure you don't shout it over and over like a 13-year-old in a Call of Duty lobby. No slurs, also no politics. It divides the audience and drives the ratings down. Don't worry, Samuel, you can count on us like how Luke Skywalker counted on Aslan to bring the full force of Narnia's natives down on the Death Star. This, as you know, allowed the rebellion to overload the core reactor with the power of nature magic. Of course, this did require the integral aid of the caped crusader Bruce Wayne, who used his Batarang in order to collapse the right wing of Darth Vader's TIE fighter. This would make it so that he would be unable to fire upon Tinkerbell, 
who was currently in the process of ferrying Luke to the reactor shaft. The hell? Donald, what kind of circus act did you bring onto my show? He's always like this, Steve. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's showtime. Now listen, originally I was grateful that Donald orchestrated this whole gathering, but now I'm kind of getting a bad feeling about this whole situation. So when we're out there, no funny business. Got it? You'll have us all on our best behavior, Steve. You can count on that. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Family Feud. I'm your host, the one, the only Steve Harvey. Pleasure to meet you, Richard. Uh, quiet over there. For this game, the going is 300 points. Three face-off rounds, three questions. The team with the most points overall moves on to the fast money round. All this to win loads of cash as the grand prize and the chance at a brand new car. The hell is that, Steve? Brand new my ass. Family feud struggling for views. That's a 2015 model. Donald, settle down over there. Tonight, we got a good one. We got the best one. We have... Are you sure you want to refer to yourselves as this? Announce it for all to hear, Richard. Uh, no, I am not Richard Dawson. I am Steve, but all right. We got the team of melanin stealers facing off against the team of champagne poppies. Give me Drake. Give me Donald. Let's start the game. Cups of the, rose, hey. the hell? Bitches in my own Hey, phone. hey, knock that shit off, Drake. We're at Family Feud, Drake, not Coachella. Ah, oh, come on, let him sing. I'm sorry, King. Sometimes when I have a mic near my lips, I just can't resist the urge to usher in a melody or two. I'll do anything to brighten up the day of the beautiful ladies in the crowd. Fucking light-skinned motherfuckers, I swear. Mr. Harvey, we're on air. Oh, shit. Listen up, y'all. Give me Donald. Give me Drake. Let's get this going. Top five answers on the board. Hey there again, Daddy. Uh, I mean, Donnie. Gentlemen, please. We surveyed 100 men and women. Name someone or something you should stop sleeping with as you grow older. Drake. I'm gonna have to say 21 Savage, Steve. The rapper? When we're in the studio, he's like a stallion in heat, but he's not the type to settle down. Champagne Poppy can't keep sprinting forever, Stevie. Okay, awfully specific answer, but let's see if it's on the board. Show me 21 Savage. Aww. It's all right, Drake. Nice try, Drake. You better get the number one answer, Donald. Don't fuck this up. Kim, pipe down over there. Donald, you have the floor. I'm gonna answer with your wife. Y your wife? As you grow older, you should stop sleeping with your wife? No, not my wife, Steve. Yours. What the hell? All right, I swear if this answer is on the board, someone's got some explaining to do. My wife. That's what I'm talking about, Donald. We're gonna play, Steve. All right, Melanin Steelers, you're off to a good start so far. 86 points still left in the round, Joe. Four answers on the board. Okay, I won't let you boys down. Give me pop music for 600. What the... Mr. President, this is not Jeopardy. Oh, okay, sorry, Stevia. Uh, all right, listen, we surveyed 100 men and women. Name something or someone you should stop sleeping with as you grow older. Joe, you should be the expert on this category. Steve, did you know this guy was alive during World War II? Actual fossil. Donnie, please, I'm trying to focus. Okay, let's go with Mr. Biggles. Mr. Biggles is your answer? Mm-hmm. He was the name of my little teddy bear I had back when I was six. Oh, uh, of course, I didn't stop sleeping with him until only last year when Jill made me. You slept with a stuffed animal till you were 79? Yep. That bear was in the White House? Yep. Jesus. All right, well, let's go with Mr. Biggles. Oh, wow. Hooray. Nice job, Joe. Hell fucking yes. That's what we love to see, Joseph. Hey, hey, calm down there, Kim. Aw, oh, shucks. Looks like they may take the round. I'm sorry I screwed up back there, guys. No need to apologize, Drake. We're just here to have some fun. Barry's right, Drake. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's still anyone's game. Cope however you want, George. This is what we call a skill issue. You smell this, George. This is what victory smells like. Kim, please. We ask that all our contestants show professional courtesy to one another. All right, all right. I apologize. That will be my final outburst. Good. Now let's hear your answer. I'm going to go with your samurai sword. Good answer. Good answer. I don't know what the hell you good answering, Donald. I don't know any damn kid with a sword, but all right. Show me samurai sword. <laughs> the fuck kind of people you surveying, Steve? That was a good answer. Hey, that's enough of that. All right, Donald, three answers left on the board. One strike. Donnie, what about... Whoa, whoa, hey! You can't help teammates during this stage. Ah, uh, sorry, Mr. Smith. Please don't slap me like you did to Chris Rock. What the... Donald, just give me your damn answer. All right, Steve, I'm gonna go with a pacifier. Good answer, Donald. All right, I'll give you that one. That's not too bad. Show me pacifier. Good stuff, Donald. You do North Korea proud. All right, Joe, two answers left on the board. Okay. I'm gonna go with a soup can. Good answer, good answer. The fuck kind of answer is that, Joey? A soup can? Now you listen here. Back during the Great Depression, Nana couldn't afford a nice fluffy pillow for me and old eczema Eric. Because of this, we would often have to resort to sleeping on soup cans. 
in order to avoid having our heads on the floor. Of course, this was a very dangerous time. If you had your head on the floor, then you ran the risk of the leprechauns entering your ear canal and hijacking your brain. With your cerebellum under their control, they would then force you to return back to their nest after stealing old printing press Peter's groceries. It's up there, Steve. Soup can's up there. Um, all right, show me soup can. Joseph, you better get your act together. One more mishap like that, and I'll make sure you won't make it back to the White House. Kim, we do not make threats here on Family Feud. Another outburst like that, and... Uh, Jesus. What is that? What in the hell? Drake, knock it off. Understand. Sound crew, cut that motherfucker's mic off unless his team gets control of the round. Heavenly God Almighty, give me the strength to host this damn game. All right, Kim, two answers on the board, two strikes. If you get this wrong, then Champagne Pappas will be able to take control of the question and steal all of your points. That's not gonna happen, Steve. I'm gonna bring this baby home. Good, because I'm trying to get my ass out of here, too. What's your answer? All right, I'm gonna go with children. Ch children? Yeah. You know, as you grow older, it becomes weird if you sleep next to children. I mean, look what happened when Michael Jackson- Hey, all right, that's enough of that. Show me children. Or don't, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Dad, I hope you're proud of old Kimmy Cakes. What kind of weirdos are they showing this survey to? All right, Donald, one answer left on the board. Reel this baby home. Name something or someone you should stop sleeping with as you grow older. Steve, I think we can all agree that Melanin Steelers has this round in the bag. My answer is your parents. Thank God, a logical answer. Survey says... Wow, Donnie, nice job. Good fucking shit, Donald. Thanks, guys. It's all right, guys. There's still two more rounds. We can turn this back around, no problem. Even if we don't. I'm just glad to be invited by you guys. Drizzy's day always is brighter when the presidents give him a ring a ding. Oh, don't sweat it, Drake. We'd love to have you hang out with us more. Take notes over there, losers, because this is how you win the game. Kim, I already warned you several times. Next outburst and I'll start deducting points. All right, that's our first round, everybody. Melon and Steelers taking the lead with 94 points, but it's still anyone's game. Gimme Joe, gimme Barack, and let's get into round two. Well, hey there, Barry. Hiya, Joe. Some friendly sportsmanship, I like it. You suck, Barack. Security, next time that Chinaman talks out of line, I want you to tase him. Top five answers on the goddamn board. Gentlemen, we asked 100 men and women. Give me a boy's name that starts with the letter H. Steve, I'm gonna go with Hercules. Hercules is the first thing that came to your mind? Good answer, Papa Bear. Mama Bear's just right over here if you need me. Hey, I thought we cut that motherfucker's mic off. All right, show me Hercules. Oh. Oh, come on. Hercules is clearly a boy's name. Mr. President, it may be a boy's name, but unfortunately, that was not one of the popular answers on the survey. Joe, your turn. Let's go with haagen -Dazs. The ice cream brand? Yep. Surely someone out there has named their kid after the heavenly, delicious, frozen sensation that is ice cream. All right, if you say so. Survey says... Oh. Joseph, I'm gonna... Oh. Sorry, Mr. President. Since neither of you guessed a popular answer, let's bring out the next two contestants. Give me George, and uh, wheel out Kim on a gurney or something. I can't feel my legs. I did say that this would happen, Kim. I thought you said you didn't make threats here on Family Feud. That's right, we don't make threats, we make guarantees. Gentlemen, give me a boy's name that starts with the letter H. I can't reach the buzzer. George! Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna go with H. Bush. Huh? Can't go wrong with Papa's name. The, the answer you want to submit is H. Bush, not what the H in his name stood for. H. Bush. I feel like I'm in a damn simulation. Survey says. Oh. Kim, give me your answer and please, Christ Almighty, don't let it be some sort of weird societal taboo or some nonsensical gibberish. All right, this one's for all the marbles. I'm going to go with Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra? Yeah. Good answer, good answer. Shut the fuck up, Donald. Kim, that's not even a name. That's a catchphrase. Steve, you uncultured fool. In North Korea, Hail Hydra is one of the most common names for boys. It has to be on the board. Whatever. Hail Hydra. Oh. Damn you Americans with your strange names. I can't believe this is actually happening. The prompt is to literally just give me a boy's name that begins with the letter H, and none of y'all have succeeded so far. All of you besides Drake managed to run a nation at some point? How is that possible? It's a tricky one, Steve. You think you have the right answer on the ropes, but then just like tricycle Tiffany, it escapes the tip of your tongue. Let me ask y'all something. Are y'all motherfuckers crazy? Give me Donald and give me Drake. Let's get this over with. Gentlemen, you know the drill. Just give me a damn name, please. Donald. Steve, I'm gonna thank my gardener for this one. 
Brilliant man, honest, hardworking man. Love him to death. Sounds good. Let's hear it. His name is Jose. Jose? That's right, Steve. Solid name, honest man. Good answer, good answer. Let me ask you something, Donald. Shoot. How you spell his name? What, you want me to tell you what two plus two is while I'm at it too? I mean, Jesus, get a little culture in you, Steve, or take an ethnics course or something. It's spelled J-O-S-E. Okay, and you're aware the prompt wants a boy's name that starts with the letter H. What are you, a parrot? I heard it the first time. Come on, let's see it on the board. Oh. Fucking rigged. No wonder your ratings are going down the shitter. I'm gonna have a stroke. Drake, please save the day. Give me a boy's name that begins with the letter H. I'm gonna go with Hector, Steve. Jesus, I said, wait, what did you say? I said Hector, Steve. Hector, yes, excellent, good, see? Why couldn't the rest of y'all make as much sense as Drake? God bless you, Drake. Finally, we can see an answer on the board. With a J. Huh? Hector with a J, Steve. Damn, why didn't I think of that? With a J? Drake, do you hate me? No, of course not. I love everyone, Steven. Aww. Hate isn't in my vocabulary, but Hector is. It's up there, Steve, I know it. I'm gonna end it all. <laughs> Listen up, freaks. I just got word from the man upstairs. The Lord is speaking to you, Steve? The showrunners, in an unprecedented split decision, due to unfathomable cartoonish levels of idiocy bordering racist ignorance displayed by both teams, the showrunners are deciding to skip this round's question and even the next round. Quite frankly, it is unbelievable that the one time we see astronomical levels of naivety and incomprehensible denseness it comes from none other than the people that run our nation. We've had wrestlers on here, high school dropouts, controversial celebrities, crackheads, you name it. But congratulations, because you guys are the only people in this show's entire history to have been able to muster the combined disastrous ingredients of stupidity, toxicity, and most likely mental illness, and fashion it in a way to where this episode was able to reach its full apex of nonsensical calamity. Is that good, Steve? Okay, we're moving Melanin Steelers directly into the fast money round so that they can try their hand at winning the grand prize and ending the show. Oh, hooray, we did it, guys. Nice job, boys. Now all we need to do is to get 200 points in this round and we'll win. I'm relying on you two. Since I was unjustly incapacitated, I don't think I'm mentally fit for this round. My brain feels like it was put through a blender after being electrocuted by Palpatine's testicle zapper. Don't worry, Kim, Donald and I have this. You better. I want that car, Joey. In the United States, that car may be eight years behind the production line, but in North Korea, that model is top quality. We're still assembling 2007 car models to this date. Jesus, all right, Kim, we'll get you that car. Donald, let's get you into this round first. Joe, go backstage and we'll call you out after Donald is finished. Okie dokie. All right, Donald, you ready for this? Steve, I was born ready. God practically brought me into this world with all of my physical and mental attributes maxed out. Intelligence being at the forefront. Whatever you say, 20 seconds on the clock, get me the hell out of here. That's plenty of time, Steve. I'll have all the answers out by the time the stopwatch hits the 18-second mark. That's literally impossible, but all right. Name an activity you'd do if you were bored. Ring up Stormy Daniels. I hey, don't encourage that behavior. Name an insect you wouldn't hesitate to kill if you found it in your house. A Dota player. What the, never mind. Name the first thing you'd do if you caught a burglar in your house. I'd let the Draco sing and fill him with holes like he's SpongeBob. On gang, Donald. Ah! Name a show modern teenagers love to watch. Well, it definitely isn't Family Feud, Steve. Eight seconds on the clock, Donald. All right, all right, Game of Thrones before season five, to be precise. That's a good answer. Yeah, the later seasons did suck. Name a way people communicated before texting came along. With the telephone. Hey, he didn't do half bad. Good job, Donnie. Good stuff, Donald. All right, Donald, let's see how you did. I said, name an activity you'd do if you were bored. You said, ring up Stormy Daniels. Yep, gotta change up the pace every now and then. Survey says... Not bad, not bad. Next, I asked you, name an insect you wouldn't hesitate to kill if you found it in your house. You said... Good answer, good answer. Survey says... What the hell kind of survey is this, Steve? That answer should be number one. Donald, can you be quiet for once? Next, I asked... Name the first thing you'd do if you caught a burglar in your house. You said, let the Draco sing and fill him with holes like he's SpongeBob. A reasonable course of action. Survey says. So when Donnie wins the 20K, he's treating us to a fine dining steakhouse, right? Keep dreaming, Barack. I'm using my cut of that 20K on some Clash of Clans gems. Town Hall level nine, here I come. I asked, name a show modern teenagers love to watch. Mm -hmm. You said Game of Thrones. 
Seasons one to four, Steve. Don't forget that. Survey says. Only 15 people, Steve. What kind of idiots did you show this survey to? She-Hulk apologists with a cumulative IQ of six. Pipe down, Donald. God damn, you talk a lot. Finally, I asked, how did people communicate before texting came along? Mm -hmm. You said telephone. I swear, Steve, if the number isn't above 40, I'm filing a class action lawsuit against whoever is doing these surveys. You ain't gonna do shit, Donald. Survey says. That's how we do, baby. Good going, Daddy. Nice one, Donnie. Atta boy, Donald. All right, let's bring out Joe and start the second round. Come on, Joseph. No need to worry. You're a smart fella. This is no time to get the heebie-jeebies. Oh, but what if I let down Kim and Donald? What will they say? Joey, you cost me that car, and you'll wake up to the sound of every missile from North Korea's arsenal heading straight for D.C. They should have casted me as Manny for Ice Age. I can put on a much better mammoth voice than Ray Romano. Ah, I'm gonna have a panic attack. Joe, it's time for your round now. Oh shit, come on, Joe, you can do this. So Donald, my birthday's coming up. Now that you're about to win 20K, what are you thinking of getting me? I'm not buying you anything, Barack. If you wanted the prize money, then you should have come up with a better answer than Hercules. Oh, shut up, Donald. You went with your answer even after spelling it out for Steve. Listen, it didn't click at the time, but I think I redeemed myself with the fast money round. Joe only has to get 51 points. That's practically only an answer or two. You guys think he can do it? He better. I want that car. I'll look like a rock star riding that down the streets of Pyongyang. Look, he's coming out. All right there, Joe. How you doing? You feeling okay? I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. Good. Now listen, Donald scored 149 points, meaning that you only have to get 51 points to win the grand prize. You're fucking welcome. Oh, geez, I don't like the pressure. Can I phone a friend? Mr. President, I haven't even asked a question yet. Now listen, things are going to be a bit tougher now, so we'll give you 25 seconds on the clock. Oh, fuck. You got this, Joe. Just breathe, buddy. Good luck, Joe. Joseph, if you don't... Uh, never mind. Good luck. All right, Mr. President, name an activity you'd do if you were bored. Uh, sleep? Name an insect you wouldn't hesitate to kill if you found it in your house. Uh, a rattlesnake. <laughs> Jesus, I surrender! Mr. President, that was not an insect. Try again. Uh, an ant. Name the first thing you'd do if you caught a burglar in your house. Well, I'd kindly ask Barack to leave. The hell's that supposed to mean, Joe? Name a show modern teenagers love to watch. Uh, The Golden Girls. Name a way people communicated before texting came along. Cave paintings. All right, Joe, you feel satisfied with your answers? No, I want to go home. Excellent. First, I asked you, name an activity you'd do if you were bored. You said sleep. Survey says... Oh, wow. Hooray. Good job, buddy. Good one, Joe. He's off to a good start. North Korea smiles upon you, Joey. Good start, Joe. Melanin Steelers almost has this in the bag, 40 points away. Oh, goodness. Next, I asked you, name an insect you wouldn't hesitate to kill if you found it in your house. You said an ant. Yep. They may be a great spicy, bacony snack, but leave too many of them roaming about, and you'll find a horde of them in your house soon enough. Survey says... Holy shit! Nice one, Joe. Home stretch, Joe. You're doing it, buddy. Ant was the number one answer. Next, I asked you, name the first thing you'd do if you caught a burglar in your house. You said... Well, why would Barack try to rob me anyways? I thought we were friends. Survey says... Oh. Call 911 was the number one answer. Uh-oh. It's okay. It was just one answer. He can still bring this home. Next, I asked, name a show modern teenagers love to watch. You said The Golden Girls. Yep. No youngster can resist the hit sensation that is The Golden Girls. Survey says... Oh. Stranger Things was the number one answer. Well, it's not really a surprise Joe didn't get that one. I'm honestly surprised he didn't name something older, to be honest, like Charlie Chaplin or something. Joe, you have one question left on the board. You need two points to reel this baby home. How are you feeling? I can't stand the anxiety. I feel like I'm going to cry. Good stuff. That's what we like to hear. Finally, I asked you, name a way people communicated before texting came along. You said cave paintings. Oh, joy. This brings me back to how I asked out my first girlfriend. You asked her out by painting on a cave? Yep. Jesus, are you part of the Flintstones family? Just exactly how old are you? Survey says... No, I was so close. Damn, one point off. Nice try, Joe. I'm not going to give up that easily. That's all, folks. We want to thank the presidents for... You're not denying me of my car, Steve. Jesus, how do you get the keys? Security, you are authorized to use deadly force on him. Asian driver coming through, motherfuckers. <laughs> Fuck your game, Steve. I'm riding this baby all the way back to Pyongyang. <laughs> Please remain calm. Emergency medical personnel are on their way. Remain seated. Help is en route. All you had to do was get one point, Joe. I know, Barry. I know. Hmm.
What if I told you boys, Kim's felony here today is not the most interesting thing to have happened to us? Is it finally time to go back and kick ass? We finally reached out to you. Who are you guys talking about? Elon. He needs our help. Ooh, can Champagne Poppy tag along for the fun? Sorry, Drake, but this operation is on a need-to-know basis only. Ah, uh, you bunch of party poopers. I can't wait to tell Elon of your latest felony counts, Kim. You're one to talk, Donald. Listen, I just wanted the car. I didn't mean to vandalize the building or get Steve fired. However, I do appreciate you paying my bond and bailing me out, Donald. That's what friends are for. I kind of like to think of myself as the Bruce Wayne of our group. Intelligent, handsome, excellent at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Also being able to solve whatever obstacles we may encounter with my deep pockets whenever the situation demands it. Come to think of it, Trump Tower could be our headquarters if you guys really wanted to form our own Justice League. Oh, that would be fantastic. But I call dibs on being Martian Manhunter. Why would you be Martian Manhunter? Because first, I am deathly afraid of fire. Also, I just figured since Donnie's Batman, you would be Superman. Kim could be a Yellow Lantern and Barack would be Cyborg. Why do I have to be Cyborg? Why do I have to be a Yellow Lantern? Anyways, we've been waiting here for quite a while. Anyone find it odd how Elon wasn't out front to escort us in? Actually, now to mention it, none of the staff are at their posts. Something's off. Jesus! What the hell is that? It's the divine horn of the Archangel Gabriel, announcing the rapture for all to hear. Repent now and rejoice. Can someone get this guy evaluated? The hell was that? Maybe they're just in the middle of renovating. The hell kind of renovating has a siren blaring throughout the building. Guys, I don't think whatever's happening is routine. Look at this. Are those blaster marks? Golly, those look like marks from a blaster. Joe, for Pete's sake, take your pills, buddy. We need your head on straight for this, okay? Oh, uh, fine. That cannot be good. Still think they're just renovating, Joey? Listen. When old Nana used to invite her friend Hennessy Harold to our house... Oh, so now you can think of names that begin with the letter H. That would have been helpful when we were on Family Feud, Joey. Guys, cut it out. Something's clearly amiss. I can't get Elon on the line either. Damn it. Elon did say the Sovereign Hierarchy was close to achieving interdimensional travel as well. What if they got here before we did? Well, looks like our mission objective is clear. Things are different now, boys. The enemy has found their way onto our soil. Well, hell. Let's find the bastard then. No one gets to destroy America but me. Let's get rid of our civilian attire and suit up. It looks like the task of uncovering whatever's going on here has fallen to us. We gotta find Elon. Golly, this is just like saving Private Ryan. Take this seriously, Joe. If hostiles gain access to Elon's jump engine, then our nation know, our world, will be facing an unparalleled danger the likes of which we have never before seen. The fate of not only our universe, but all realities are as of this second in grave peril. I fear we may be in the end game now, gentlemen. Gosh, I always wanted to say that. Oh man, how the hell do we go from family feud one week to saving the world the next? Only one explanation, Barry. This editor is on some LSD. Wait, what? Not to be a pessimist, but what happens if, well, Elon has croaked, shall we say? That's an if, when, and maybe situation, Kim. Best not to dwell on it. If it comes to that, we'll figure it out then and there, not now. As for the time being, we gotta locate- Ah! Shit. What the- Ah! What the hell? Was that Donnie? My god. They must have sent a Terminator disguised as Donald. Oh no. Barack, please don't die on me, buddy. Ugh, ouch. It's all right, I'm fine. The plate armor took the brunt of it. Look, not even a scratch, although I do feel like I just got tackled by a linebacker. Thank god. I was afraid this would be a horror movie situation. You know, where the black guy always dies first? Wait, Kim, you're hit. Look at your shoulder. Yeah. Looks like I should have worn that fancy plate armor Elon gave you guys. It's gonna be difficult to use my sword now. Well, what the hell do we do now? The only thing to do, Josephine, we hunt down the infiltrator. This pile of scrap heap has been going around terrorizing our planet, killing our citizens, all the while wearing my face. I intend to exact retribution. Well, how the hell do we find it? We split into two groups, cover more ground, no one goes alone. Your priorities are locating Elon and the Terminator. If it managed to take down most of the staff here, chances are this unit is more resilient than the ones we encountered back on Sovereign Hierarchy soil. So our rifles may pose little challenge to its combat armor. Great! My guess it's a new model. Human living tissue on the exterior, masking a hyper-alloy combat chassis controlled by a microprocessor. Good thing you cosplayed as one of those things, Donnie. Looks like that knowledge is coming into use. My guess, though, like its predecessors, it still has one weakness. Chocolate chip ice cream? If so, I can't blame it. I'm a sucker for frozen treats myself. No, Joe, Kim's sword. 
He saved my life when we were in that alternate reality by slicing one in half. Not entirely sure why, but they seem increasingly susceptible to damage from the asteroid metals in my blade. When I cut through them, it felt like I was cutting through air. If you can get the jump on it, Kim, decapitate it, otherwise radio in when you have vision on it, and we'll all converge on your location. And if we find Elon first? Get him proper medical aid. Without him, we can't get the jump engine back online. Without it, we're susceptible to an invasion from a parallel universe. Oh fuck, this is madness. Well then what the fuck are we waiting for? Let's hunt down that futuristic toaster and be done with it. Kim's right, gentlemen. Looks like we have a cyborg chase on our hands. Before we get underway, I need me a dirty sprite. The hell, Joe? Now, if I were Elon and my facility was in lockdown, where would I hide? Uh, how about in plain sight? Guys, look who I found. Well, that was fast. Finally, a stroke of luck. Mr. President, you're a sight for sore eyes. Elon, you're hit. What are you doing out here in the open? I barricaded myself in my quarters, but when I heard shooting going off, I saw you guys by the north stairwell, so I decided to meet you guys there. But as you can see, I've seen better days. Can you walk any further? I used up my remaining strength to get here, but it's okay, I'm all right. Thankfully, it missed all my vital organs. Where's Barack and Kim? Scouting out the southern quadrant of the floor. Our plan was to try and locate the fake Donald or you. Once we found you, we'd escort you out of the building and get you medical aid. It's a miracle you guys came at all. Fate does have an odd way of piecing things together. What do you mean, Elon? Didn't you call George? I didn't call him. I was in the middle of investigating some strange anomalies on the jump engine. When I finally pieced together what transpired, I did find the Terminator time. attacked the facility, wounding my staff and killing others. Wait, if you didn't call me... Christ, the Terminator mimicked his damn voice. This was all a trap. Oh, great. First, that lady working the McDonald's drive through wouldn't let me order a happy meal because I was too old. Now this. This day just keeps getting worse. You don't know the half of it. Also, I'm in immense pain, so if we could avoid the nonsensical rants for today, Joe, that would be great. What do you mean by that? Well, he's clearly been shot, George, you silly diddle. Joe, please. Elon, what do you mean we don't know the half of it? Mr. President, you all have been walking around with targets on your backs. Haven't you noticed the strange occurrences on your adventures since you came back? I knew it. I knew there was something strange about the Golden Girls not being a top answer on Family Feud last week. The Kraken, the Yeti, the paranormal oh, entity. Fuck. What about them? Mr. President, they are not from here. I knew that Yeti was from India. No, Joe. As in, they're not from our planet. They're Category 1 reality natives that were jumped to our universe by the Clinton's Terminator. Wait, hold on. You're saying the Terminator was in your facility? using your terminals to jump hostiles from said Category 1 realities into our own? Unfortunately, yes. So Steve Harvey was also a Category 1 reality entity. Golly, who could have guessed? Uh, no, Joe. Steve's from our world. How the hell could you even let that happen, Elon? I thought this technology was on a need-to-know basis. How did it just walk in here and do whatever it pleased? Because my staff thought it was you, Donald, Mr. President. You're part of a limited few that know of Anderson and the Sovereign Hierarchy. That means you have security clearance. Any and all of our equipment is made readily available to you whenever the need should arise. And that's exactly what the Terminator took advantage of. While I was out of the office, it came in and tampered with the equipment. I would have been able to tell the difference between the infiltration unit and yourself. But my staff don't know you as well as I do. Everywhere you went, it would monitor your status, listen into your comms, and then jump in threats to your location. It did its job without so much as a hindrance. Enemy units pinpointed. Get Barack on the line. We need to tell him this. Barry, come in. No good. I'm not getting a signal. I think we're being jammed. Fantastic. Mr. President, I'll lock myself in one of the safe rooms. You dismantle the infiltration unit. However, leave the CPU intact. The microprocessor is on the left hemisphere of the parietal lobe. Yes, I know. How did you? I cosplayed as one at an anime convention. What do you plan on doing with the CPU? I think he wants to take a peek at the Terminator's browser history, George. No, he plans on reverse engineering it. Yes, and perhaps it has data on it that will give us some more insight as to what the Sovereign Hierarchy's mission objective was. Just sit tight, Elon. We'll clean up this mess. Come on, Joe. Roger, Bidenator on the move. This is awesome. You know, the Akatsuki always operate in duos. I feel like we're Itachi and Kisame. Kim, I think we kind of have some more pressing matters at the moment than anime references. Sorry, just trying to make light of a bad situation. It's how I cope, like Logan Paul.
You know he got a signed deal with the WWE. That should have been me, damn it. You wanted to join the WWE? Hell yeah. It was my dream ever since I was a child. Unfortunately though, when my generals found out, they told me they weren't too fond of the idea of their supreme leader in underwear on national television, wrestling with other grown men. Uh, okay. I told them it wouldn't be anything sexual, but they're so old school back home. Well, all right then. Anyways, getting back on track, why do you think the Clintons chose to send a Terminator wearing Donald's face? Isn't it obvious, Barack? A Terminator makes lots of noise when it walks because of how heavy it is. Donald does too. No one would suspect a thing. You know, that's actually pretty sensible. Kim, Kim, I need your help. Donald! Hold on, buddy. Colossal Kim is on the way. Shh. Donnie? What the? Quiet. The Terminator has the ability to modulate its voice. You boys almost walked into a trap. Jesus. Holy shit. Well, it's a good thing you found us. Calmly and slowly, Kim. Lure it out and get ready to decapitate it. Uh, my, my, Donald. Might I say you look quite skinny in that plate armor. Damn it, Kim. We want to make it seem believable at least. Oh, screw you, Barack. I should have just let the Terminator shoot you guys a second time. Look, I'm just saying, if he wants to play the part, he should at least commit to the role. Whatever, although I do have to partly agree with Barry here, Kim. I don't think Robot Me would fall for something like that. Deceptive protocol engaged. Wow, you really think so, Kim? You were saying, Donald? Well, looks like we were wrong, Donald. Oh, come on. Real me would never fall for something so blatantly obvious. I've been trying P90X recently, and have been getting compliments everywhere. And that's how you can tell that's the fake Donnie. I hate you guys. Oh, I bet. Why don't you come out here and show me your washboard abs and tight glutes? Kim, why are you so weird? Well, it's taking the bait, isn't it? All right, I'll strike a brief pose, but then we gotta find the fake Donald. Well, that's hook, line, and sinker. All right, get ready, everyone. Light it up when it comes out so it'll be stunned. Then, Kim, you go in for the kill. You got it, Donnie. All right, get ready, it's coming. I'm gonna bonsai this motherfucker. Wait, hold on. If it really is a one-to-one -one copy of Donald, then Donnie's right. It wouldn't fall for such a- Shit! Jesus! Ah! Ah! Uh, is everyone... Oh, you have got to be kidding me. What are you waiting for? Shoot it! Don't listen to it! It's trying to trick you! Uh, I'm getting tired of getting knocked on my... Oh, crap. Shit! Well, what do we do now? We have to ask questions that only the real Donald will know. Don't worry, guys. I got this. Hey, real Donald! How do you feel about donuts? Ooh, donuts! Delicious! Do you have one on you? Did you seriously think that would work, Kim? Well, I mean, the damn Terminator wasn't supposed to get excited, too. Kim, this is an infiltration unit. It's designed to look and act like Donald. Every trait and quality that Donald has, so too does this Terminator possess. It is the mirror personification of our Donald. It just fooled all of us, which precipitated the rise to our current predicament. We're going to have to go beyond general questions here. No worries, this will be a piece of cake. Prepare to be exposed, you Chinese piece of spyware. Well, that certainly sounds like something Donnie would say. Wait, Donnie tagged it earlier. Just look at the one with burn marks on its breastplate. Joe, look at my breastplate. It's spot clean. The equipment Elon gave us works well, maybe a bit too well. We won't be able to identify a physical difference between them. The weight. The Terminator endoskeleton is much heavier than the average human male. So is Donald! Fuck you, Kim! Shut the hell up, Kim! Well, has anyone seen Donald naked? Maybe he has a birthmark or something. Uh, no. Definitely not. Damn it, Donald. You should have gone skinny dipping with me on that hiking trip. I would rather be shot, as would I. I mean, what if we do just randomly shoot one? It's a 50-50 shot. We can't base this on a whim. We have to be absolutely certain. Come on. It's a much better chance than the multiple choice tests I had to take in college. I always guessed C, and look at me, I turned out fine. You sure about that? Look, what's the worst that can happen? We shoot the right Donald and we expose the Terminator. We shoot the wrong Donald and we end world hunger. Hey, fake Donald, what do you say we form a momentary truce and kill Kim? That sounds like a swell idea, and I would happily agree to those terms. However, you are the fake Donald. Okay, stow it, everyone. This is a question only the real Donald will know. Donnie, when we went to the Johnson Mansion, what did we see there? A skinwalker. What the? Kim, slice down the other one. He's the machine. Wait! Just hold on. Look, I can prove that I'm the real Donnie. Kim, you tried to do your cleansing ritual, and I said it still scarred me to this very day. What the hell? How did the machine know? How did it? Shit, who knows how long it's been here. It must have accessed information on Elon's drives. Then how can we possibly tell them apart? Donnie, when we were playing Heroes of the Storm a few months ago, what did I ask you to do when we were waiting for the game to start? and the gates to open. You asked me to dance on Cho'Gall, and I said no because I was looking up a talent bill. And then what? Then I eventually did it anyway, because you're my best friend, Joe.
Nice job, Joey. Wow. Good going, Joe. Now that couldn't have been something the machine knew. We never briefed Elon about our gaming adventures. You really pulled me out of a pickle there, buddy. When you're on your meds, your mind is as sharp as Kim's blade. Ah, uh, thanks, pal. You know, this actually reminds me of the time... Uh, guys, what is that? A primitive infantile race, confounded by the simplicity of their own existence. A puzzled child necessitates a guiding hand. What the hell is that? Donnie, is that the Terminator? No, I have no idea what that is. What are you? Are you an agent of the Sovereign Hierarchy? Sovereign Hierarchy. The label to which you refer will herald your impending demise. We'll stop the Hierarchy just like we stopped the Terminator. You believe your world will be saved through the dismantling of an authoritarian nation. But that is all that is. A nation. An instrument. A stepping stone. We are infinite. Well, if you're not with the Clintons, then what are you? How are you speaking through this machine? Throughout your species history, valor and bravery encompass some, while jealousy and avarice run rampant among others. The latter are tools, corrupted minds, easy to influence. Thus, they shall be used to usher in our coming. Man, I seriously miss the days when we were just going to amusement parks and playing Star Wars. Now we're talking to a bionicle. Your kind is imperfect, flawed, and constant conflict with one another. You require correction, and we are the solution. Our mere presence turns your skies crimson with the blood of the fallen. We are the cataclysm which will darken the stars. I still don't understand. Help us comprehend what you are, what your goals are. We are nowhere. We are everywhere. We are the foreign yet familiar. We bring salvation through the reforging of flesh. We are the being with a thousand faces. Wait, isn't that what the spirit said when we were with Arnold? You're the same entity. A Category 1 reality native that was jumped in by this Terminator. Category 1 reality. Your vision is limited and your deduction inaccurate. A result made manifest due to your species hubris and rudimentary functionality. I think he just called you stupid, George. It called all of us stupid, Joe. Well, that's not nice. That's impossible. I'm pretty much a 12th level intellect like Lex Luthor. Whatever this thing is, it's just using an intimidation tactic. Intimidation. A basic tool used on the gullible. In the absence of true power, there is no need for intimidation, for you pose no threat to our grand vision. We are simply informing you of the inevitability of your demise. Consider it a parting gift, for the novelty of this exchange has lost its luster. Our arrival is nigh, and with it, the stars shall weep. When the harvesting commences, you will resist, and you will fail. When you do, the unification will proceed. It's offline. It's gone. Holy crap. What was all that? Whatever's going on here, it's much bigger than what we initially anticipated. Oh man, just wait till we tell Arnie about this. He's gonna have his mind blown. Well, he'll have to wait in line. First order of business is getting any wounded personnel here medical aid. Then we gotta notify Elon of this new information and repair the jump drive. Looks like we have our work cut out for us. We better not waste any time then. The sooner we find out what's on this Terminator CPU, the better. Mr. Presidents, thank you for coming back on such short notice. It's no worry, Elon. We don't have much to do nowadays anyways, aside from mischievous adventures and filming Minecraft videos. Well, I must say that is a bit concerning considering that two of you in here are current heads of nations. How are you feeling, Elon? Physically, I'm fine. Still a little stiff, but nothing debilitating. George, how have you been? We haven't seen you on the weekends as much. Hey, Barry. Yeah, I've just been here in my off time doing whatever I can to help Elon. I haven't been able to sleep. Every time I put my head down, my mind just races and I keep thinking about the entity. Yeah, what it was saying was pretty unnerving. Can't blame you for not being able to sleep. Fortunately, with George working around the clock with the heads of our engineering departments, we've made significant headway. The jump engine the infiltration unit sabotaged is partially operational again, but we've uncovered information about the entity that is disturbing. Fuck! This just never ends, does it? Well, what is it? Our initial assumption that it was a Category 1 reality entity was incorrect. Whatever this thing is, it thrives in a realm that transcends our own. Take a look at this. What are we looking at? 
a map displaying all realities and all parallel universes that we have discovered. Goodness, this looks more convoluted than the path of exile talent tree. On this map, you'll find all realities that Elon and his team have surveyed and or traveled to. Category six through one realities, sovereign hierarchy soil, the list goes on. Okay, and where does the entity play into all this? When beings jump to a different reality, this process of interdimensional travel leaves behind a signature. For example, since you jumped to sovereign hierarchy soil, we would pick up your signatures there and also in our own reality. In multiple realities, we have identified a signature that matches that of the entity from the crying alley and from the Terminator's CPU after Kim decapitated it. I don't understand. The signature from the Terminator's CPU changed after Kim decapitated it? Think of it like this. The Terminator had its own signature, which we will term Signature A. However, when the entity began speaking, the signature changed, dramatically, into Signature B. The entity somehow assumed control of the Terminator, and by doing so, it left behind its mark. We believe the entity is somehow influencing and making contact with beings in different realities without actually physically jumping there. How the hell is that possible? We don't know. What we do know is this. All of these highlighted frames represent realities that possess traces of the entity's signature. Hold on. The entity has visited all of these realities already? It either visited them or influenced the inhabitants in one way or another. We are not the first reality to have encountered this thing. These signatures predate the entity's visit even to the Sovereign Hierarchy's universe. What do you mean by influence? Like through TikTok or something? Great. We're dealing with an OnlyFans Eldritch entity. Stow it. We're wasting precious time even discussing this right now. We believe whatever this being is, it has the ability to turn people on each other. Perhaps by enhancing their worst traits in order to manipulate them and to get them to weaken their defenses. Making it easier for the entity to harvest them, as it said previously. Before we send our teams out to these realities, we first survey them by jumping drones through them. In most of the realities, the drones saw nothing, nothing but a blood-red sky and ruins. Remnants of civilization somehow destroyed through various doomsday events that leave behind nothing but dust. This was what we saw in every reality but two. Oh man, I have a bad feeling about where this is going. As you should. In one of the two realities, our drones were unable to acquire visual footage, but we did hear the denizens. And what did you hear? Death, war, infighting. Liberal America, everybody! We also were able to identify a name ushered over and over by some individuals who sounded like they were on the precipice of going mad. Sovereign. The entity? We assume so. And what did you find in the other reality? Our drones were able to capture two images before going offline. The first image is what looks like a tear in the fabric of reality. A massive portal, perhaps connecting these realities to the plane Sovereign derives from. This is the second image. What the fuck? Oh my god. What the- Jesus! That's Sovereign?! Our hypothesis is that Sovereign begins influencing people in a certain reality, causing them to turn on one another. You are mad. Once there is a dominant ruling force on the planet, operating under Sovereign's leadership, Sovereign guides them into constructing massive portals or way gates which will usher in its coming. So it just kills everyone when it arrives? We have no idea. All we know is that once it appears, life itself vanishes. Not even a trace of simple prokaryotic life can be found. This evidence is further supported in the Terminator's CPU. What do you mean? Through decrypting its archived data, we were able to access information that informed us that Sovereign had a guiding hand in the construction of the Clinton's jump drive. Sovereign gave them insight on how to enhance it. Enhance it how? Ever wonder how the Terminator got here? Elon's drive destabilizes the molecular integrity of metal objects upon initially jumping. The Terminator never would have been able to use Elon's drive to jump to other dimensions. It would have been torn apart. So what? Sovereign is fucking Bob the Builder now too? Who knows when Sovereign came into being. Regardless, it told the Clintons how to construct a jump drive that is even more efficient than Elon's. Most likely by using the vast knowledge that it has been exposed to over the eons that it has been harvesting. No offense, by the way, Elon. Fucking eldritch entities cornering the interdimensional jump market. Anyways, getting back on track. Uh, additional information we accessed through the infiltration unit CPU also confirmed that the hierarchy and the Clintons are already in the process of constructing the way gates. Wait, so when we went there last time... Yes, they had already begun constructing the way gates by that point. Fuck! We're all screwed! So why did the hierarchy send a Terminator here then? That one at least is simple, to eliminate you. They don't want us interfering with the construction of the way gates after they saw that we had the capability of entering their reality. So why did they choose me as the face of the infiltration unit? Uh, well, it looks like Kim was right, Donald. According to the decrypted files, 
They chose you because you were closest to matching the Terminator endoskeleton in terms of weight. Fuck you guys, I told you, I'm bulking! See, told you, Barack. Actually, you were a potential candidate too, Kim. The files say Mr. Chang was an alternative option, but they figured the Terminator would have a higher rate of success imitating Donald. Fuck's sakes. Fat ass. Guys, we are dealing with an incalculable malevolent force that threatens not only us, but the existence of every being in every reality. As you all saw, it's already here. First at the crying alley, and second when it made contact through the infiltration unit. So what the hell do we do? Well, that was the bad news. Now I think it's time to share the good news. What? That this is all a fever dream? In the realities that Sovereign has harvested, the strength of its signature is off the charts. It seems as though the more influence it holds over a reality, or the closer it is to conquering it, the more amplified its mark on that reality becomes. So what does that mean? Well, in our reality, Sovereign's signature is weak. Nothing more than a tiny blip. In the Sovereign hierarchy's reality, however... The signature is strong. Very strong. They won't last much longer without our help. And once Sovereign is done with them, we'll be next. Jesus. We have no time to spare, Mr. President. The drive has been partially repaired, but acquiring this information took its toll. Jumping in all of the drones to these realities have taxed an already damaged jump drive. I can jump you to Anderson's reality and back, but it isn't stable enough to power any more jumps outside of that, meaning you won't have backup. We never needed it, Elon. Says you, Donald. I'm tired of getting shot and knocked on my ass. I sent a drone to Anderson's reality and established contact with him and your counterparts a few days ago. All of them are caught up to speed with the threat at hand, and they expect your arrival. Then there's no time to waste. Get ready to make the jump, Elon. Fuck. Oh, fuck. Guys, are we really doing this? How do we possibly plan on stopping this thing? Joe, when we entered office, we took on the responsibility of leading our nation for the betterment of its citizens. Some may disagree with our legislation, others may receive us with contempt, but we knew we were signing on to do right by the American people to the best of our capabilities. Even if it meant damaging our image, even if it came at the cost of displaying our shortcomings and inadequacies for all the world to see, now we must do what's best not only for our people, but for all peoples, everywhere, regardless of their place of origin. And if we fail, then at least we can meet that failure head on, knowing that even if Sovereign's victory was inevitable, we still gave that bastard hell. Hell of a speech, George. You got Drake's ghostwriter to conjure that up for you? Shut up, Donnie. I hope Sovereign harvests you first. You're right, George. Make the damn jump, Elon. We'll make the Clintons pay for dismantling Sizzlers the best restaurant chain to have ever graced the face of humanity. Uh, don't think Joe got the memo, but at least he's on board now. Great! Now everyone's gonna call me a Panda Express manager again. Wish us luck, Elon. Good luck, Mr. President. I'm counting on you. We all are. So why exactly did you call us all here tonight, Donnie? Okay, listen. With the expenses I've had to cover these past few months, first with the indictment, then bailing Kim out of jail, and finally compensating CBS on Kim's charges of vandalism on their studio, as well as the damages on the car from when he drove it literally through the damn wall. I'm a little short on cash. That's why I gathered you guys here tonight. We're gonna meet with a contact of mine who has a job for us, and you bozos are gonna help me recoup my losses. Kim, why don't you just pay Donnie back? We all know you have the money. Are you crazy? My generals would never let me transfer funds into the hands of you white devils. I'd be in serious trouble if word got out back home that I wired over some money to the States and made it payable to Donald or CBS. They'd probably send me to bed without dinner for an entire month. I can't handle that. Calm your ass down, Kim. After this meet with my contact, we'll not only break even, we might even turn a profit. Uh, who is this contact of yours exactly? He's a trustworthy individual, a man with a reputable background who has his head on straight. Donnie, this isn't some sort of loan shark situation, is it? George, what the hell do you take me for? Of course it isn't a damn loan shark. Look, it's just when someone has to say that a guy has a good reputation. Chances are it usually means that the guy doesn't have a good reputation. Look, he's here. Ah, uh, Mr. President, I was wondering when you'd finally give me a call. I've been waiting with bated breath for this opportunity. Like Swiper the Fox, lingering in the bushes, preparing for when Dora the Explorer crosses his path so he can steal her churros. Aw, oh, fuck, I wish it was a loan shark now. 
Donnie, are you serious? You want us to get into bed with Alex Jones? Listen, Alex has a once in a lifetime heist for us with a massive payout. Let's just hear him out. A heist? You want us to break the law? Oh boy. I've always wanted to color outside the lines as a child. However, whenever I would begin to display any sign of a rebellious attitude, my aunt would call over the barbell gang led by four plate pounder Pete to teach me a lesson. They would then drive me out to the bridge to Terabithia and hold me upside down, suspending me over the lake's frozen waters until Mothman himself would hear my pleas for help and fly me back to the safety of my bedroom. Fascinating. I too have heard similar stories to yours, Mr. Biden, straight from the Pentagon. Yeah, we're not doing this. Look, I'm sure you guys will change your mind when you realize how soundproof his plan is. Go on, Alex. First, I want to thank you guys for meeting me here instead of Starbucks. 90% of the baristas there are actually interdimensional demogorgons funded by the Clinton Foundation to siphon off the essence of America's youth to fuel their multiversal soul apparatus. I mean, given what we know, that's really not that crazy, Barry. Fine, I'll give you that. Here, let me show you guys the plan. There's a compound here located near the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Every year near the end of May, the narco trafficker. Hold on, hold on. Did you just say the narco trafficker? Yeah, I mean, who else do you plan on robbing? Actual Americans? Now, I don't know which one of you would actually condone that, but I certainly wouldn't. At least this way, we'll be stealing from a criminal, not from an innocent civilian. He's right, Barack. Lavish living at the expense of your people's suffering is the pinnacle of wicked materialism. It's sad that I have to tell you this. It's common sense. Okay, but stealing from a drug lord, what, do you guys have a death wish? Oh, come on, Barry, we've been through worse. George, come on, help me out here. Uh, I actually kind of agree with them. Look, at least this way, the money we acquire may go to a good purpose, like financing Elon's jump drive reconstruction. Or opening up more Femboy Hooters restaurants across the nation. Jesus. Look, what I was gonna say was at the end of May, the narco trafficker visits his daughter across the border for her birthday. Because his compound's location is in such a remote area, he also recklessly takes all his Sicarios with him. The place is unguarded and unmanned. I've received this intel from an especially trusted CI. They've never led me astray or fed me false information. How do you know for certain? What if there is someone still in the compound when we arrive? Then we send them to meet Tupac, Barry. Send them to meet Tupac? What the hell are you guys on about? This is a horrible plan. Look, in all of my history of rants and conspiracy theories, I have never once said anything that wasn't backed by a verifiable source. Just ask Joe Rogan, he'll confirm that. Look, Barack, if what he's saying is true, then this will be like taking candy from a baby. It'll be over before you even know it. Well, I'm game. Hooray, more action-packed adventures. Come on, Mr. President, I brought my Chrysler Pacifica. We'll all be able to fit in there. Jesus, what a tough drive to get here. It's a good thing we didn't have the Shinobi drive. Excuse me, the what? So, Alexander, what's the plan now that we're here? Wait, hold on. First, everyone put on their masks. What the hell is that? I ain't wearing no damn do-rag. It's not a damn do-rag, it's a balaclava. Yeah, I don't speak Arabic. Look, if we're going to do this, then I have one non-negotiable condition. The five of us wear either masks or some sort of disguise, so none of this traces back to us. You can do whatever you want, Alex, but the rest of you, put on your masks. Don't worry, Barry, I came prepared just for the occasion. As did I. What the hell are you guys wearing? After my parents were brutally murdered in front of my eyes, I, Bruce Wayne, took on the mantle of becoming Batman, the infamous cape crusader idolized for his enhanced, nearly superhuman capabilities to rob banks. After receiving the Wayne estate through my inheritance, I transformed the mansion into a five-star casino, regularly ferrying high rollers to my gambling establishment with the use of my bat plane. Donald. That is not even remotely similar to who Bruce Wayne is. I decided to go with Zack Snyder's version of Batman. Snyder's Batman wasn't like that either. Oh, come on. That version of Batman went around killing people left and right, but him owning a casino is where the line is drawn. Joe, who the hell are you supposed to be? I am the 25th century speedster, Eobard Thawne, otherwise known as Professor Zoom. After spending years idolizing the Flash, I managed to harness the powers of the Speed Force and travel back in time to this exact moment, a pivotal time in history where you all would need critical aid in the breaking in and looting of a drug lord's compound. I, the Reverse Flash, am here to ensure your success. I like it. We're like some sort of suicide squad. With these disguises on, no one will be able to recognize us. Jesus, all right. Can we just get this going? All right, so here's the blueprint of the compound. To cover as much ground as efficiently as possible, we'll split into two teams. 
You three go together to the second floor, and I'll go with the war criminal and Mr. Kenya to cover the ground floor. That should create an amusing and entertaining dynamic for the interstellar entities that are currently viewing us from outside the Matrix. Do you have anything for us to carry our loot in, or do we have to rely on our pockets? Don't worry, I always dot my I's and cross my T's. I brought these cartoon money bags we can stash our valuables in. You deliberately brought cartoon money bags? What, you want Nike duffel bags? Support child labor if you want, but that's not how I do things. Now listen, amateurs. From time to time, things don't necessarily go as planned, and we have to make a quick getaway. I thought you said the compound was empty and your contact never led you astray. Always expect the unexpected, Kimosabi. I am not Japanese. Anyways, like I was saying, in the event we need to get out fast, I brought this bow and plunger. We can shoot it out a window and zip line to the nearest tree with our cartoon money bags strapped to our backs, then run back to our vehicle and lose them in the mountain range. A sound plan, I like it. Looks like a lot of foolproofing went into this, Alexander. This is something straight out of Looney Tunes. Listen, I know you guys think stealing is your forte. Excuse me? But I assure you I'm well versed in the art of thievery myself. This plan will work. Okay, so get in, spread out, get our loot, easy enough. But how do we get over this wall? Well, that's easy. Whip out your tornado gun. Our what? Don't you play dumb with me, Mr. President. I know from the former CIA director that you guys have been experimenting with weather weapons and tornado guns since the 50s. Whip one of them out and propel us to the other side like if we were caught in the dust winds produced by the Tasmanian devil. Alex, we don't have that. Well, what the fuck? If you guys didn't bring that, how on God's green earth are we supposed to get over this wall? So let me get this straight. You discovered the exact location of this compound, managed to find a window of opportunity of where it would be unmanned, but you didn't account for a way to get over this wall? Listen, I'm kind of retarded. What if we all stacked on each other's backs like Jenga? Are you kidding me? With Donald's weight on someone's back, he'd crush them. Like a Mortal Kombat x-ray or something. Shut the hell up, Kim. I could call in my private helicopter. It could pick us up and drop us over the wall. You're seriously going to call in a helicopter from the city? Have it fly all the way out here just for it to pick us up on one side of a wall and drop us off two feet over to the next side? I can shoot my plunger at the top of the wall and we can scale the side of it. What if we went back to the 7-Eleven a few miles back, bought like 10 nerds rope candies, tied them together and- Hey uh, guys, I just pulled up Alex's car next to the wall. We can use it to jump on the ledge. Brilliant, simply brilliant. All right, we are on a strict time schedule, gentlemen. We'll rendezvous back here in one hour. In the meantime, look for items of high value. Diamonds, jewelry, safes, cash stashes, and most importantly, power bars. I'm running low on them back home. Avoid less liquid assets like narcotics or artwork. Trying to find a buyer for that will be more hassle than it's worth. You got it, Alexander. We won't let you down. All right, let's get to it. Golly, I feel like a pirate surveying an island for loot to plunder. Anyone kind of find it weird, though, how organized this place is? I mean, it looks like a regular mansion. What were you expecting? I don't know. I guess I was just expecting more drugs. Coke on the kitchen counter. Guns laying out in the open. Maybe a bathtub that opens up into a tunnel that leads to the outside of the compound? I mean, come on. This is the lamest narco complex I've ever seen. I've seen kids on Minecraft build way better ones. I will say I do find it kind of odd. Even old Nana's place had a few crack pipes hidden in the mattress. Gentlemen, I think I may have found the jackpot. Holy shit! Oh wow, a Playboy magazine! Uh, I wouldn't touch that. Joe, look what's next to the magazine. Oh wow, Pop Rocks. For God's sake, these are diamonds, Joe, and look at the one in the corner. That has to be at least six carats. What about all the tinier ones? Aren't they worth more cumulatively? Yes, Joey. No, they aren't. What the hell are you talking about, Donald? If you have four two-carat diamonds, then that's eight carats total. That's worth more than the one six-carat diamond. Kim, you idiot. Depending on the clarity and how it's cut, larger diamonds are more rare and therefore are worth more. You are a blundering buffoon. A caveman with barely enough cognitive prowess to understand the concept of using a stick as a weapon. Guys, I'll just call George and he can settle the matter. Prepare to be proven wrong, Donald. Eat my ass, Kim. Yellow, this is W, currently in the middle of robbing a narco compound. George, what the hell are you thinking saying that over the phone? George, we've run into a conundrum and need your help. What is it? We need to know if a carrot is a vegetable or a fruit. What? Joe, you idiot, give me that. George, what's worth more? Four two-carat diamonds or a single six-carat diamond? I don't know, why does it matter? Just grab them all. You guys got more than enough room in your bags, don't you? Uh, about that. Holy shit, you guys found so much loot already that you can't even fit a few diamonds into your bags anymore? Only I have space in my bags, George. Kim stuffed his with top ramen, while Donnie filled his with snacks from the cabinet. Shh, don't tell him that. If Barry hears, he'll get mad at us. What the hell, Donnie? 
I'm risking my neck out here just for you idiots to be looting little Debbie snacks and cup noodles. Oh shit, he heard us. Quick, Donald, hang up. Absolute idiots. Uh, Mr. Presidents, we have some company. Oh crap. Whoa there. <laughs> hey there, Princess. There's no need to get riled up. Many people call me the King of Dog Whisperers. No one calls you that. Look, I'll show you. Here's a scoop of my newest pre-workout supplement. Just a bit of water and I bet you'll love it. Alex, do you think it's a good idea to give a pit bull a pre-workout supplement? <coughs> oh, that's a good girl. See, I told you guys. Okay, I stand corrected. <coughs> Look, Princess wants us to follow her. Oh my God, are we actually gonna follow a drug lord's pit bull? Come on, let's see where she takes us. That is a safe. The pit bull led us to a safe. I can't believe it. See, aren't you glad we followed Princess now? Okay, Alex, I'll give you that. Your plan's not going too bad so far, and your ability to befriend this pit bull was pretty impressive. Thank you. Finally, some common ground. It's all I ever wanted between us, Barack. Okay, now it's your time to shine, Barry. Let's see you pick that lock. What? Pick the lock? Why would you assume I know how to do that? Well, it's just your people tend to... Uh, guys, Princess has something in her mouth. <coughs> what is it? It's the codes to the safe. Oh, who's a good doggo? You know I might actually take you with us. Would you like that, princess? Guys, look what's in the safe. Holy shit, I don't believe my eyes. Are those Nutri-Grain bars? Why are there granola bars in there? Who cares? Look at the Pokemon card. The Pokemon card? What about the rolls of cash and gold bars? Barack, this is why you're lucky I'm here. That is a 1999 holographic first edition card. How much is it worth? Guess. Just tell us, Alex. No, you guys have to guess. Fuck's sakes. 20,000. Much higher. No way, it's more than 50 grand. You guys are lowballing it. Come on, think big. 100,000. A card with a gem mint rating can go upwards to 250,000. Holy. Jesus. Good going, princess. <laughs> uh, what is that? Shit, it's the proximity alarm. The proximity alarm? Yeah, someone's making their way into the compound. It might be the narco-trafficker. The narco-trafficker? Alex, what the hell? Quick, Mr. Presidents, stuff this shit in your bags and we gotta go. Come on, Princess, you're coming with us. Alex, you're seriously gonna steal the dog too? What if they come looking for it? Fuck, Alex, you're gonna get us killed. Mr. Presidents, it's time I told you who exactly we're robbing. His name is Alejandro Mojave, a dangerous player in the narco game, going by the nickname of Chihuahua Chomper. Jesus, does the guy eat chihuahuas or what? Would that be a problem? They're vicious devils. The less of them, the better. But if he does does eat chihuahuas for the thrill of it. Just imagine what he'd do to poor Princess if he found out she helped us. Fine, fine. We'll take Princess with us then. It's the least we can do for her after she led us to that safe. Alex, there you are. Is that a proximity alarm? Yes, we all have to get the hell out of here right now. Make sure your cartoon money bags are strapped tightly to your backs, gentlemen, and get ready to zip line. My God, we're actually doing this? What the? Shit, there he is. It's the Hefe. Donald, what the hell are you doing in my house with this freak show? What the, Steve? Alex, you said this house belongs to a drug lord. Thanks for the free money, Alejandro. You piece of shit. Come on! Ha! Yes! Like taking candy from a... Hey, watch where you're fucking going. Oh, shit! Hold on, princess! Oh, fuck! Lord, Lord, have mercy! Why are you guys here? He said we were robbing a compound belonging to a drug lord. Did he take my dog? He took your dog. Did he take my Pokemon card? He took your Pokemon card. I hate you motherfuckers.